Ali, I think you're in the lead with trees and mammals this afternoon. But we have arrived at our Kaigilia Africana, or the sausage tree, which was requested by Monk. So here we are. It's a beautiful one. It's not a particularly big one. I've seen them much larger than this. But it looks as though the elephants have been tacking into it at one point. And they're big trees. And they can stand well over 20 meters tall. And their trunk can get almost double the thickness of this one. But it's a very easy tree to sort of spot. It's got very, very light gray bark, as you can see. F fairly smooth as well. A couple of cracks here and there. But nothing quite like a, a leadwood tree or a knob knobthorn tree. You see that they're normally um, got quite a few sort of grooves in, in their bark, so quite smooth. Um, it's actually too tall for me to go and reach any of the leaves. I can't even bring you a sample back. <laughs> they only start sprouting out much taller than what I am. But it's a, it's a beautiful tree nonetheless. Now they've got quite large leaves. Those ones look like some caterpillars or something along those lines. I'll turn this radio off very quickly. Um, have been nibbling on them. But I can't see any fruit starting to develop just yet. So we'll have to keep coming back and checking on this one. But normally you'll see a bit of a, a string coming off of the tree. It looks like string. And then you'll get this massive sausage-like fruit uh, which develops off of it, which is where they get their common name, the, the sausage tree. Now, you wouldn't want to sleep underneath a tree like this, even though it does provide quite a nice amount of shade if you were a leopard or a lion. But if it had fruit on it and one falls off, you could get something that can weigh up to about six kilograms land on top of your head. You wouldn't want something like that to land on top of your head. But luckily, and there are lots of animals out there that do feed on the fruits. So one thing I got to see quite a bit of is the hippos love to eat the fruit. And the best thing that I've ever seen is that the hippos would sort of... Um, just rest in the shallow water during the day, exposing their backs, getting the nice warm sun on them. And as soon as a fruit would go and hit the ground, I kid you not, the hippos would get out of the water and race over like it was going to be their last meal that they were ever going to have. And then they'd start munching on them, but many different animals eat it. So again, so it's the hippos. I think the hippos enjoy them the most. You get porcupines, you'll get common dacre coming down to feed on them as well. And they love to eat, you know, lots of animals like to eat the seeds because the fruit is filled with seeds. It's quite pulpy as well which is quite nice let's have another look i want to see if i can find i just want to quickly see if we can actually figure out what has been eating on this tree i'm just looking i want to see what caterpillar is maybe feeding on it but i haven't seen anything just yet and it would be unusual to see a caterpillar at this time of the year in the peak of winter but anyways now i can't see any flowers just yet they are beautiful red flowers that can last uh, and you can stay in bloom for up to about two months, if I'm not mistaken. I'm sure it varies in different areas depending on nutrients and the soil, that type of thing. And um, it's quite interesting, the, the Kaigilia trees with the flowers, is because it's not really the butterflies and things that are pollinating them. It's actually the bats, the epileted fruit bats, that are the ones that go after them, which is quite interesting. They're their main pollinator, but you'll see lots of different things. Also eat the flowers. Monkeys like to eat them. Elephants, of course, will like to eat them too. But we're going to try and move on to our next tree now because we've got, I'm sure we've got quite a few to get through. So Ali has moved on from trees. Now she's back on the mammals. She's got some hippos.